We Yoruba suffer abominably in independent Nigeria and we have decided to exit Nigeria. But then, since the time of Nigeria's independence in 1960, our being part of Nigeria has been pulling us down. Nigeria's former colonial overlords, the British, laid for Nigeria the foundation of decline and failure by manipulating everything, the constitution, population census, regional boundaries, the pre-independent election, to establish the small Fulani nation in a position of unassailable dominance over Nigeria. The Fulani are non-indigenous to Nigeria, are the least educated people in Nigeria, are almost a nomadic cattle-heading people living in the wild, unable to understand the nature of a modern country. They embark on making themselves the new colonial overlords of Nigeria and thereby launching Nigeria into a culture of impunity, process manipulations, massive public corruption, fearsome economic decline. In spite of Nigeria's great wealth of natural and human resources, and though Nigeria became one of the world's largest producers and exporters of petroleum from about 1970, Nigeria's great wealth of natural and human resources, though Nigeria became one of the world's largest producers and exporters of petroleum from about 1970, Nigeria's economy has declined relentlessly. By 2018, an international agency classified Nigeria as the home of most of the world's extreme poverty. Today, 2024, leading persons in the management of Nigerian former governors of the Nigerian Central Bank, serving ministers in the Nigerian federal government, etc., are publicly admitting that the Nigerian economy has collapsed. All over the country, the poverty is fearfully visible in this early month of 2024 in the enormous and increasing numbers of beggars in the street, in the large numbers of businesses that have closed down and are closing down, in the length of dilapidated main roads, in the collapse of electricity supply, in the decline of the inequality of education, in the massive unemployment, in the total collapse of Nigerian currency. The NERA in the world exchange market, in the persistent four-digit inflation, in the flight of hundreds of thousands of educated youths to other countries, in the increasing numbers of youth suiciders, in the massive crowds of hungry protesters in all parts of Nigeria. We Yoruba deeply sunk and are sinking deeper and deeper into all this poverty. In addition, since 2015, the Fulani greatly emboldened by their success in dominating Nigeria have embarked on an agenda aimed at conquering and subjugation all the non-Fulani peoples of Nigeria with the confidently avowed objective of turning all of Nigeria into a Fulani homeland. In the storm of this violence since 2015, hundreds of thousands of Nigerians have been killed including as many as an estimated 29,000 of Yoruba people. Yoruba farmers have been forced to abandon farming altogether, and the agricultural economy of the Yoruba nation has been almost totally destroyed, thereby foisting terrible food insecurity on Yoruba people for years and years to come. Since more and more of the Marud doing Fulani are still being brought from all over West Africa. The killings, the destructions of our farms and villages, the kidnapping of thousands of people, and the extortion of large amount of money from our people are all continual. We Yoruba people have been intensively devastated by all this deeping disaster of Nigeria as Nigeria retrogressed on all fronts. It dragged Yoruba land down with it. Moreover, particularly, policies and actions aimed against the Yoruba further hurt Yoruba interest. 
the military dictatorship seized important Yoruba assets that Yoruba people had created in the Western region in the 1950s, schools and hospitals that had been established by the state government, private agencies, and individual Yoruba persons, and that enjoy very competent management by their founders, Yoruba Cocoa Export Management System, Yoruba Radio and Television Institutions, the proud university that we Yoruba people built in Ileife. Even the Yoruba Regional Sports Stadium, most of these assets were then poorly managed or deliberately neglected and left to decline and perish. Even though our Yoruba region continue to command most of Nigeria's crumbling economy, ever intensifying poverty became the lot of most Yoruba people. The most visible and most painful part of the poverty was the devastating neglect of the Yoruba youth because of the destruction of the economy. Countless thousands of Yoruba youth, most of them graduates of universities and colleges, pile up year after year as unemployed with the federal government and federally controlled state government, doing nothing to help. Many of the youths managed to flee to other countries. Many tried to reach Europe by crossing the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean Sea, and some of these perished regularly in the desert and the sea. Some of the youth who were stuck in Nigeria plunged into crime, criminals caught, drug abuse, the quality of Yoruba political leadership rapidly crashed too as many Yoruba leaders were sucked into the intensive and horribly undemocratic governance, election rigging, and the arrogant and all-pervading public corruption that are the character of Nigeria. But the worst finally came under the presidency of a Fulani man, Muhammad Buhari, President of Nigeria, 2015 until 2023. Under President Buhari, the Fulani agenda over Nigeria matured fearfully. It was advanced in it was advanced with two initiatives and from two directions. The highest objective of the Fulani agenda is that the Fulani must conquer all the indigenous peoples of Nigeria, turn the indigenous peoples, indigenous homelands into one Fulani homeland and enslave all the indigenous peoples. The success achieved by the agenda are already staggering. First, the Fulani have succeeded greatly in propagating a doctrine among the masses of uneducated and poor Fulani people of all West Africa. The doctrine that Allah has given all the land of Nigeria to the Fulani nation that has never had a homeland and that the Fulani are to possess it by all by conquest. Hundreds of thousands of Fulani from most countries of West Africa, influenced by this propaganda, have relocated to Nigeria to partake in the conquest and violent possession of Nigeria. It is a phenomenon propaganda success. President Buhari directly hated this success by announcing that people are free to come to Nigeria from any part of Africa without passport or entry visas, a coded message to the masses of illiterate Fulani flocks. The masses of Fulani Mujahideen militarized masses of four flocks that are being brought to Nigeria served as the foot soldiers of the violent conquest initiative, spreading all over Nigeria, killing maiming, destroying farms and villages, raping women, kidnapping people, and extorting ransom, forcing countless farmers to abandon farming, seizing and remain, renaming villages all over the Nigerian Middle Belt, establishing hideouts in the countless forest locations in most parts of southern Nigeria, including Yoruba land, and spreading out violence from there. And then there is the government-based aspect of the Fulani agenda. This is the domain of the Fulani men and women who from their positions in the President Buhari's administration set themselves the duty of filling almost all the key positions in the Nigerian federal establishment. 
and all key positions in Nigeria's security apparatus, Army, Air Force, Navy, Police, Secret Services, Immigration Services, Port Authority, with Fulani people. By the end of President Muhammadu Buhari's presidential term in May 2023, the Fulani had succeeded greatly in taking over Nigerian's federal government and its security forces altogether. The Fulani had by early 2023 come close to their dream of conquest of Nigeria. In the last month of Buhari presidency, the simple act of changing the design of Nigerian's paper currency note was turned into a massive source of suffering for Nigerians. At the instructions of the government, people surrendered their whole currency notes to the banks, but when people demanded the new note, the banks usually had none to give. Therefore, even rich people who own large amounts of money in banks had no cash to spend. Commercial life fell into utter chaos. People were desperately rushing to banks and fighting bank officials forcing bank officials to flee over walls of and fences. In many towns, people destroy or burnt down bank buildings. Desperate men and women stripped naked in banking halls. Some committed suicide across the country. Many banks closed because of the angry crowds in front of the banks. It became an hazard to go to banks in most part of the country. The Nigerian Supreme Court ruled that the whole currency note should return to circulation but the executive government ignored their ruling. The causes of all this destructiveness is the incompetence of the Nigerian government, coupled with the government's constant strategy of imposing poverty and want on the people in order to make them more controllable. Subdue them. Virtually all Yoruba people now want their Yoruba nation to quit Nigeria. Nigeria is no longer one country. It is a chaotic stack of insecure, distressed, and maturely hostile nationalities, a failed state in the estimation of the informed world. The two things now keeping the chaotic stack together are first, the common people's fear of more blood, and second, the resolve of some of the elite of various peoples of Nigeria to hold on to their shares in the Nigerian culture of public corruption and timid and insensitive of the most of the rest of the elite to act purposefully, decisively towards peaceful separation of their various nations from Nigeria. As things are going now, a blood-soaked dissolution is becoming inevitable. On February 24th and 26th, the Fulani acting through their topmost nationalist organization, the Fulani Nationalist Movement, issued two declarations of war against the rest of Nigeria, against the president, the federal government, and the peoples and the state government of all parts of Nigeria. Their statement announced that they did not accept the president of Nigeria as their president, that they would overrun Asurok, the seat of the federal government, take Asurok and use it as a base for conquering the peoples and government of Nigeria, and that they would burn down everything in Nigeria. Their declaration then ordered all Fulani to proceed immediately to all parts of Nigeria to fight and bring down all government. Following their declaration of war, the Fulani immediately commenced war against all sections of Nigeria in Yoruba land on January 25th on the Lagos Ibado Expressway, the busiest highway in Yoruba land in Nigeria. Fulani militia men burst on the highway from the forest forced a local chairman of a national political party out of his car, kidnapped him into the bush, and later demanded 200 million naira for his ransom. On January 27, in Kwara State, Fulani kidnappers adopted a student from the campus of Ilori University. On January 27, in Oyo State, Fulani militiamen adopted the chairman of a public corporation and took him away into the forest. On January 29, in Oyo State, a local church pastor was attacked on his farm and killed by Fulani militia men. On January 29, in Ekiti State, Fulani terrorists wielding AK-47 rifles attacked the very top of Yoruba society and culture by killing two Yoruba Ubers on a highway. A third Uber escaped. On January 30, on the road south of the Ekiti city of Emure, 
in the far south of Ekiti State. Fulani kidnappers kidnapped 14 school children returning from school in their school bus and later demanded 200 million naira for their ransom. On February 1st, Fulani terrorists forced their way into the palace of a Yoruba Oba in Kwara State, killed the Oba, adopted his wife and child. On February 7th, the Fulani ambushed an Oba in his farm in Kogi State and killed him. By this crowded series of attacks, the Fulani have served notice to the Yoruba people that no Yoruba person of any status should be considered safe in any part of the Yoruba homeland in their homes or place of work or on the open highways. But we Yoruba will be separated from Nigeria before the seas of blood come sweeping over everything in Nigeria. We have lost a lot of to the Fulani rampages. Famine is dead over most of our farmland. Famine is threatening to engulf our homeland and the displaced farmers are increasing unemployment everywhere and some of them are fleeing to Yoruba kinsmen in Bini and Togo republics. An estimated 29,000 of our people have been killed by the Fulani and about 1.5 million have been forced to flee into exile in the neighboring Bini and Togo republics. Uneducated and unskilled Fulani youth dumped on our towns and cities by Fulani leaders to destroy peace and security, a degrading peace and security in our homeland. But we shall soon be free in a sovereign country of our own. We have no other option than to pull our nation out of Nigeria now and create a separate country of our own where we can strongly provide security for our people and develop and prosper as we desire. In summary, our Yoruba nation faces total destruction in Nigeria. We Yoruba have always proudly taken the lead in the promotion of Nigeria development and progress, but now we have resolved to exit Nigeria.